South Korea's homegrown KF-21 Boramae fighter jet flew for the first time, putting the country among the few nations to have developed and flown an advanced supersonic fighter. The first prototype KF-21, named Boramae, which means Hawk in Korean, with serial 001, took off at 3.40 p.m. local time, slightly delayed by weather, before landing at 4.13 p.m. Flying as a chase plane to monitor the flight was another KAI product, a two-seat T-50 advanced jet trainer. The latter jet may have been from the 281st Test Flight Squadron that's also based at Seishin. Major On Joon Hyun of South Korea's Air Force piloted the KF-21 prototype number one featuring the national flags of South Korea and Indonesia. The jet was also fitted with four mock-ups of the long-range Meteor air-to-air -air missile carried in their semi-conformal location under the fuselage. The twin-engined aircraft bore the flags of both South Korea and Indonesia, the only foreign partner in the program. First rolled out in April 2021, the aircraft underwent ground tests earlier this year. The KF-21, also known as the 4.5 generation aircraft, is capable of conducting various kinds of missions and is being developed by Seoul in two stages to replace the Air Force's aging fleet of F-4E Phantom II and F-5E and F-Tiger combat aircraft. The first phase of development, which has been budgeted at $6.17 billion, is set to be completed by 2026, of which Indonesia will contribute 20%. While the second phase, costing $5 billion, is expected to run through 2028 and focus on weapon tests. Mass production of the KF-21 is scheduled to start in 2026 with the Block 1 aircraft, which will be equipped with limited air-to-ground weapons and air-to-air -air weapons. By 2028, the Block 2 variant will be capable of performing full air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat missions. The Air Force plans to acquire 40 of these fighter jets by 2028 and another 80 by 2032. Other critical items will be provided by foreign suppliers, however. The KF-21 is powered by a pair of US-supplied General Electric F414G E400K engines, which offer the benefit of being well-proven, with the reliability that comes from operations in different platforms with multiple operators around the world. Among the aircraft types that also use the F-414 are the F-A-18EF Super Hornet and JAS-39E and F Gripen. The KF-21, which is expected to have a top speed of Mach 1.8, not far from twice the speed of sound, will feature three hardpoints under each wing for weapons and external fuel tanks, and will also be capable of carrying four missiles under the fuselage, according to KAI. Primary air-to-air -air armament will consist of the IRIST short-range weapon from the Germany-based Deal Company, as well as the aforementioned Meteor from the European MBDA. Establishing from scratch the capacity to produce reliable aircraft engines or air-to-air -air missiles is far from easy. It makes sense for Seoul to acquire these items off the shelf, especially when those missiles on offer are at least as capable, or perhaps even more than their US counterparts. Even in its initial form, known as Block 1, the KF-21 will be equipped with an active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar, and infrared search and track to pick off aerial targets. Even if the Block 2 version still falls short of being a true fifth-generation stealth fighter, that might not be such an issue for South Korea either. After all, Seoul has already procured the F-35 that does fulfill these criteria, and it is planning on buying more Joint Strike fighters, too, including the short takeoff and vertical landing F-35B variant. Seoul hopes to get the Block 1 version of the KF-21 into the hands of the Republic of Korea Air Force rapidly, another benefit of this type of program. KAI plans to manufacture the first series production KF-21s between 2026 and 2028, allowing the replacement of the Air Force's aging F-4E Phantom II and F-5 Tiger II fighters. 
In taking this approach, Seoul appears to have cleverly found a way of avoiding the enormous costs and lengthy processes inherent in developing a true fifth-generation fighter from scratch. At the same time, the basic KF-21 promises to offer at least as much as rival 4.5 generation fighters, with all the benefits that come from homegrown production, to boot. Some would refer to it unofficially as a 4.75 generation fighter, with all this in mind. The total value of the KF-21 program is pegged at 8.8 .8 trillion won, equivalent to $6.67 billion at the present rate of conversion. At this stage, with one prototype flying and five more, of which four are two-seat variants, in advanced stages of production, it looks like Seoul's decision to take a different route to forge a next-generation fighter might pay off. While only 65% of the KF-21's parts are of South Korean origin, its maiden flight still marks a significant achievement for a country that doesn't have a lengthy history of aircraft production. The only other countries to have developed and flown an advanced supersonic jet fighter are the United States, Russia, China, Japan, France, Sweden, and a European consortium of the United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, and Spain. Of those, only the U.S. and China have deployed domestic-made fifth-generation fighter jets that feature stealth technologies, radar jamming capabilities, and avionics that integrate onboard and remote data to give pilots a real-time picture of their operation, according to NATO's Joint Air Power Competence Center. However, there are still potential pitfalls ahead. The 2,000 or more sorties planned for the flight test program will surely present some unexpected challenges and issues that need to be ironed out. Then there is the issue of Indonesia's commitment to the program. Indonesia has a 20% stake in the first phase of the program and had been expected to buy 50 KF-21s. But payment delays coupled with procurement of other fighters and interest in others suggest that the country might not stay with the KF-21 for the long haul. That could leave a funding gap that Seoul would have to cover itself or otherwise find another international partner, although, with a promised price tag lower than that of the F-35, the KF-21 could be an attractive lower cost, if also lower capability, alternative, especially to countries unable to buy into the Joint Strike Fighter program. The KF-21 has significant export potential because it is expected to be cheaper than the F-35s the U.S. sells to foreign militaries. Thailand, the Philippines, and possibly even Iraq could be leading clients for the fighter, Eight wrote, adding that each of those countries operates the same kind of aircraft the KF-21 has been designed to replace. Those countries also have been customers of South Korea's indigenously developed F-A-50 light attack fighter. In its 2021 to 2025 midterm defense plan, the South Korean Defense Ministry confirmed that the country would begin developing long-range air-to-surface and air-launched anti-ship guided missiles for integration with the KF-21.